everyone, Steven here at Coral's Daily. Welcome back to join me. Uh, so today I kind of have a closing statement, or I should say the, what, the outcome of what happened to the heater saga. So um, long story short, as I have expected in the last video, saltwateraquarium.com um, didn't want to pick up the tab. They don't want to do, or they, they did not want to do to have anything to do with this issue. So, um, you know, I took a screenshot of my original purchase receipt and um, and the heater itself, uh, the picture of the heater itself, and I sent over along with the conversation with Saltwater Aquarium, uh, sent it over to Ball Group Supply and. Um, and uh, explain the situation that I bought their product from Saltwater Aquarium. Um, and uh, it has a three year warranty, still under warranty that Saltwater Aquarium, the retailer doesn't want to do anything. So I asked uh, BRS if they would be able to help me and um, they just went ahead and uh, sent out a replacement. So the unit is uh, on route here. I have the tracking number, it's not here yet, probably be here tomorrow, but uh, you know, uh, that, no, no, that's that's good customer service. So um, kudos to to um, Bow Free Supply, not so much to Saltwater Aquarium. Uh, I wouldn't say I would never buy from them again, just because I've met their reps. You know, I know some of them, and some of the conventions and shows. I know they're nice people, so I don't know if this particular person who is re repre representing them at the customer service end. Um, it's a little disgruntled or just um, short on patience. So, um, you know, Saltwater Aquarium, if you're watching this or if you and your affiliates know about this issue, or please communicate with your customer service personnel and maybe a little bit of coaching, a little bit of training, just to show them that even if it's something that you cannot do, um, don't be short on the messages, you know, try to find a solution or try to suggest the solution, um, point the door or point the window where a customer can go have their um, problems taken care of instead of just shut the door in their face. You know, that, that, that would have been a really salty test, not just for me, but for any customer out there. So um, that's about that. I did a small, a tiny small project, actually a couple of things. So first of all, uh, last video, you probably see this thing was wide open. I should have removed these two doors because I was thinking with all the air trapped in there, um, that's why I was having low pH. The oxygen level is probably low because of the air trapped in there. But then you know what? I've been watching a lot of videos online and so many people out there have their um, canopy entirely closed to begin with. So I don't think I'm like in the minority here. So like why should I have poor oxygen level and I have fans back there blowing, you know, exchanging oxygen and there is actually a gap here to allow um, the air to come out anyways. So I put them back on just for aesthetics. I think it looks nicer overall like this. And then also I did have a gyre um, sitting just on top of this Jebel pump here. Um, it's kind of like double duty, you know, when Jebel is not running, the gyre is running because they're kind of like on a different interval. But then I decided that that was kind of redundant. And Gyre, to be honest <laughs> with you, um, not to say it's a bad product, but it really is a whole lot weaker. It is a very, very weak um, wave mover. So if you want something that is kind of like an, on a gentle side that doesn't rock your ship too much, um, you can go with Gyre. It does a good broad area stroke. But um, as far as really jetting out and pushing water across your tank, that is not going to happen with Gyre. Um, so um, I would still recommend if you want to go with something high end that you can control with an app and you can simulate different conditions, you know, Ecotech Marine um, is a nice source. Otherwise, if you um, are turning cheap like me <laughs> right now I'm in a more practical kind of um, spec end of spectrum than I I went with a couple of my jet bows here um, so I anyways I moved my gyre here just as a supplement and then because it, there's already a, a vortex here going so the gyre is just like supplementing the flow for my acro colonies over there um, one other thing that I'm not sure what's happening but over there where I'm pointing, uh, my Manipora colony is bleaching out a little bit. Um, I know for sure I don't have any pests in there. 
and I am not quite certain what's going on but I also realized, noticed that um, the Acropora colony here on the tip is uh, looking a little bit bare over here and kind of over here on the tip end so I wonder if I just have way too much light now with the addition of the um, castle in the middle so I might need to think of a creative way about that because I still want to have the castle strong going strong for my uh, frag tank here to promote the growth and the color but that since they're all synced up um, I wonder if the same intensity is just way too much for these corals in here to handle um, the Nana is doing all right the rainbow is doing all right all these acros the Paslopora is doing all right this few guys are doing fine yet um, I also did notice my angelfish is kind of nipping on that colony which I don't think it's trying to eat it it's just because they're food trapped in between um, kind of like the forest of all the acroporas and they're trying to get to the food so I wonder if that's what's happening so we'll have to see and I might have to do something about the lighting situation that's um, I might have to tone down a little bit which is kind of ironic that um, before the castle I have way too little light and after adding just one castle in this 2x4 area I have way too much light um, so that's about it for today and um, thank you for joining me again um, and I guess I'll uh, bring you guys up to date in the next couple of days alright have a good evening bye bye